everyone. I'm Jesse. Obviously, you know that because you are on my Instagram. Um, I'm driving with a revival historian, Jen. She's driving our Land Cruiser. And I have worship leader, Taylor, in the back seat. We just picked her up from the airport. We just drove into Logan County, Kentucky. Um, we are seven minutes away from the Red River Meeting House. So give me a little emoji thumbs up if you've been watching some of the Dutch Sheets prophecies. Um, it's crazy what the Lord is speaking about our nation. We are truly in a revival. Um, the Lord told us in June to go all in on revival. He said, we are in revival, act accordingly. Um, so I just a few hours ago, had to cancel several speaking engagements that I had over the next few weeks. Um, four people on our team um, just decided that they're going all in. People are quitting jobs, transitioning. I mean, Taylor literally flew at five o'clock this morning and left her baby with her husband <laughs> in Orange County and just got here a few hours ago. Um, it is a sovereign act of God that we are meeting at the Red River Meeting House so just so y'all know, I literally wanted to meet at the Red River Meeting House. There's so many prophecies about the revival that was going to spring forth. This geyser of water and fire and eagles going out. Um, so many prophetic words we've gotten, our ministry's gotten, Taylor's gotten, Parker's gotten. We've all gotten about um, wildfires. I mean, I wrote a book called Wildfires. <laughs> And the word talks about these wildfires going across the nation. And uh, I would say over the last four years, um, Salt Churches, our disciples have gotten these prophetic words. And then this woman, Gina Golston, has a dream. And what's so wild is um, the Lord told us to redig the well. So we went to Pitts, Philly last month and saw about 100 people saved and baptized through the weekend. But we felt like there was fire on Kentucky. We moved out of Orange County um, just two weeks ago and moved into an RV, um, drove across the country, which was the worst experience of my entire exist existence. Um, I literally manifested at Parker and had a full blown breakdown in the car as all of my children were sick and screaming in the car and Parker decided he wanted to drive through the night and we pulled into a Walmart and tried to sleep and then the sign said no overnight parking you will be towed and so we ended up finding a campsite without a reservation and just parked at a campsite without a reservation and just dropped cash in the mailbox with my email address and we were like we just had to get to Kentucky but guys we are in revival. We are in full-blown revival. I think you guys think, oh, we gotta take a picture at that sign. That's the Red River Meeting House sign. Oh, is it um, the yeah. Oh, Actually, what? okay, wait, I'm gonna what? pull over right now. We just what? pulled onto the street. What? This is a moment right now. And um, awesome. you guys can see right here, oh my God. the Red River Meeting House. Jen, read, can you read it out loud? Yes. Red River Meeting House, three miles east of Highway 663, is the site of this early pioneer church, which was organized by a society of Presbyterians before 1789. That guy's waving. <laughs> okay, I'll keep reading it. Okay. 1789, it says Reverend James McGreedy took charge of the congregation in 1797. It was the site of the first known camp meeting in the U.S. in June 1800, which became known as the Great Revival of 1800 that marked the start of the Second Great Awakening, a major religious movement in the U.S. Okay, so wow. I originally wanted to meet at this site. I called, I emailed, I tried everything. Everything was shut. So we were like, okay, we'll go to Cambridge. We booked a site at near Cambridge. And it canceled on us. So then we, a week and a half before our gathering, we had to scramble, find new land. Our friend Jonathan Stidham connected us with land in Nicholasville where there had been a revival. We, we got to stay here and Same take a picture. Time. Yeah. So we then met in Nicholasville. Guys, it rained for four straight days in Nicholasville. We brought in four trucks of gravel. 
We were in the mud. It was insane. But guys, I feel like I need to emphasize this because sometimes people are like, oh, whatever. So I, we're estimating, I, we're underestimating because we were trying to be cautious here. We're underestimating that around 600 people plus were baptized in one weekend. Now, if I sent you a video of one of these people that were baptized and the deliverance and the healing that broke out, it is the most supernatural thing. Just one of these things. 600 of those stories happened and hundreds of people were healed throughout the day. I mean, every single training session in the tent, people are being healed and delivered. At one point, Ben Hughes prays for ears to open up and there's 30 healings in a moment. We have hundreds of videos that Paul and Evan and Zion took that we'll be releasing. They're trying to transfer the files, but they're so huge. But anyway, we were like, okay, we can't stop now because there's so, we're in revival guys. Like if you've been praying for revival, get to Kentucky. You have no excuse. You can't say you didn't know. We have social media. Like I'm telling you, the thing you've been praying for, it's happening. Stop reading revival books. Stop having revival prayer meetings. Get your butt to the Red River Meeting House. And the owner just said to us that we can put tents, like camping tents on the site. You can sleep where the second great awakening happened. I believe like this is what we've been waiting for. And uh, I, I can't even describe to you in words what's happening. There are no words. The manifest tangible presence of God is hitting every single person that is coming. And so we put out a fleece on Monday and Taylor, like, well, you were like, okay, we're not doing the stage on Monday. What did you feel? Um, I felt the, the Lord said, flip it on its head, baby. And just like that. And um, I saw the stage got actually in our 65 minutes of silence. I saw a vision of the stage getting eaten by the ground, which was actually terrifying. But the next day, I had a vision of everyone being on the grass and worshiping and everything stripped back, no in-ears, um, no huge amplification system, just very stripped back um, and on the field. And so that's what we did and it was amazing. And that was a Monday night. So this is where I need to emphasize this because sometimes on posts, you guys are like, whoa, that's so amazing. Yay, God, enough of that garbage. Like I literally can't even take it. You need to understand the sovereignty of what God's doing and the invitation that he's giving us right now it's wild these times don't happen all the time like i can't explain it to you but on a monday night after five days of revival on a monday night hundreds gathered on a field and we're, we're worshiping people got saved they got baptized and i'm like okay this is going down on a monday night in a field, so, in a field okay and then this got victoria releases two words of knowledge that are spot on this youth group gets lit up this guy daniel gets filled with the holy spirit he's praying for other people to be filled like this isn't us praying for people this like 18 year old 19 year old kid yeah. is praying for people to receive the holy spirit and they're falling out and receiving the holy spirit and tons of kids are getting saved and baptized i think like a 12 year old like baptized me because i felt like yeah. this was a mitzvah for me to enter into a new authority of the revival we're entering into. So actually I didn't even realize that I've been baptized and this is the next thing that we're entering yeah. into oh since that baptism. Okay, so we put out this fleece and we said, okay, when we lost our land originally, we were scrambling trying to find land. We finally found land and I said, I go, okay, here's the fleece we're putting out. If we get land offered to us for free, and we need $10,000 to keep going, to keep our team here. We have to fly Taylor back because her husband's not here. And I was like, if we can get this taken care of, and I didn't announce it. I just said, we're putting it out there. So anyway, this guy named Santa, actually, I should do a separate video on that. Santa. Okay, I'm going to do a separate video on that because it's so crazy. But anyway, this guy offered us to do a meeting at the Red River Meeting House this was where we originally wanted to go. We have so much favor here. So we are doing daily meetings here. Daily meetings. We won't be meeting on Wednesdays because Sabbath. <laughs> but 
We will be meeting every single night. So just get on a plane. We are an hour away from Nashville. You can fly into Nashville. You can stay in a hotel in Nashville and be bougie. Or you can camp at the Red River Meeting House. Just get here. Just get here. Just get here. You cannot say you did not know. I'm telling you right now, if you're watching this video, now you know. And now you'll be accountable for what you know. So come and see what the Lord is doing. Bring in people that need healing. Bring pink, bring in all the demon-possessed people. Um, it's just, I, I said before, like in June and May, I said people that were demon-possessed and filled would be like set free in Kentucky. And I would say Thursday night, what was it like in that in the baptismal pools? It was bizarre. I have never seen baptisms like that in my life. We literally had to set up strategically as baptisms were happening, deliverance teams outside of the baptism. So people would get baptized and immediately, I think because of just the purity and like true repentance that people were going in and getting baptized with, they were actually like all the demons couldn't be there anymore. And so it was literally prophetic and deliverance all at the same time, right away out of the water. It was it was insane. And then those people you saw go around and bless other people in the crowd. It wasn't like a just for me, just for me. Right. Immediately. It was like, who can I go and bless? Who can I go and stand and receive what I just got? How can I? It was the whole like freely you've been given. Okay, so wait. Freely give I away. need to highlight something. So someone, eternal cry, you just said pray about including Indiana. Okay. So I'm just going to address something really quick. Okay. <laughs> We get requests every single day to come to cities, and I would like to encourage you, if you're watching this, perhaps this is a Kairos moment to stop asking God to come where we are, and maybe we go where God is. Just going to put it out there, okay? So I lived in Orange County. I would much have preferred to do this on the beach, and I am in a mud field in Kentucky. I did not choose Kentucky. The Lord chose Kentucky. So America... Right now is the hour to stop saying, God, come to my city. And we say, God, we will go wherever you are. And we will do whatever it is that you're doing. Because Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must pick up your cross daily and follow me. So we are followers of him. He is not followers of us. All right. Say la. Good.